Hello, it's the next part of Performance Robots, the robust, reliable and transportable robots controlled by DMX, which means they can be linked into an existing show for performances or puppeteer with the puppeteering rig you saw in the intro there. So check out the previous five episodes to see how these work. These robots are open source and if you want to support me on Patreon, you can. Have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards including a live stream with me and all my videos early. Today we're going to be making robot heads. So after all the parts are printed it's time for assembly and I'm just using some CA glue and the activator that makes it go off really quick. A bit of clean up on the side there and you'll notice the ears are stuck on over the seam line where the parts are stuck edge to edge so it's nice and strong. There's some details to add and still some of those printing and yes as before I did make everything twice. The eyes and the mouth of the robot are going to have an LED matrix in so I can do animations and various different eye patterns and various different mouth patterns. So I'm just soldering up the LEDs there in a big string and doing a bit of a test pattern there that just goes through all the LEDs to make sure that they all work. Of course we'll have different animations and patterns in the end. Before we carry on with that it's time to look at the neck mechanics. So we've got a mount there with a neck which has bearings mounted in the top and the bottom and that mounts onto the top of the robot. The back fits into a hole and the front fits onto the 4020 extrusion with the neck rotating on top. On top of that axis is another axis that allows the head to nod and on top of that is attached another axis which allows the head to tip side to side. So I've put three servos in that mechanism, two at the front there that swivel all the way around and those are going to operate these two points to make those higher or lower to move that all around and we've got one at the back which will operate a belt drive to move the main neck mechanism. But before we can wire those in and get their centre points to get all of the levers the right length, we need to sort out some electronics. And that looks like an Arduino Mega in each head, which is more than enough to run a few servos and some of those LEDs. We've also got a MAX485 adapter. We're going to control the head as another DMX device, which is just RS485. So instead of using a shield on the Arduino, we're just going to use the chip on a minimal breakout board. I don't want to run a big fat DMX cable to the head and another one for DMX through, so I've got this Cat5 board which is just going to allow me to plug in the RJ45s on normal patch cables, and then we can terminate our RS485 bus as close to the adapter as possible. So those two boards are now fitted into the head there, and we've got the programming socket facing downwards so we can get to it, and we've got a connector there which is for the LED matrix of course, which pokes through a hole in the front so I can conveniently plug it in. And hopefully just on the board there you can see three connectors for connecting the three servos for the neck mechanism. I 3D printed a T5 pulley that fits on the servo horn so that turns the neck round and around and it's geared down slightly roughly two to one and it's just wrapped around the round bit of the neck that I printed into that part and tied off on the front with that 3D printed plate and some zip ties. I've used metal rose joints and M3 studding to make the push rods to push each side of the head there and those are screwed into nice metal servo horns for those two servos. That allows the head to move up and down pretty well and also side to side. I used some tinted acrylic for the LEDs to make visors so we can't see the LEDs until they're on. So that's the whole head assembled and as we can see it moves in three axes side to side, up and down and of course the head can still rotate as well with that belt drive. And of course these heads are independent DMX devices, they take 5 volts power which could be powered from any 5 volt source and they take DMX on the back there with the RJ45. So that means they could be put on any robot or used for any purpose on their own as separate DMX devices. 
The next thing we need to do to get all of the robot moving is actually sort out the power supplies, which I haven't really covered in the series. So we've got these two boards which have power supplies and various other electronics on, one for each robot. Each board has a 24, a 48 and a 5 volt power supply for different parts of the robot. I've got these covers that have the mains connectors in and I'll let the DC out. I do need to make a grill to go on here, but I do need to allow air to flow because the fan pulls the air through that way. We also have the main electronics for the robot and a converter here for the XLR to RJ45 for in and back out and through for DMX for the head. Right, so those are now wired up and fitted to the stands at the base of the robots. So we've got 48 volts, 24 volts, 5 volts and the electronics for the rest of the robot. And I've used DC connectors, which are basically different for each voltage, so they can't possibly be plugged in the wrong way round. In the side, we've got DMX and in the side of these, we'll plug two normal mains leads. Just a quick note on the DMX, we've got DMX in that comes from whichever source, the puppeteering rig or a computer, and that goes into that shield, if you remember, in the main electronics for the robot, comes out of the shield, which is the through connector, and then into the head connector, and that gets converted to a patch lead, so that will go up to the head, another one will come back down, and that will go through. So basically, the DMX, or the RS485, which is the hardware it runs over, is terminated right up at the head, and we still have that through connector, so everything is daisy chain device to device. And working my way up to the rest of the robot, we've now got these colour-coded covers which have got fans in where the O-drives are on the back of those boxes that are previously open. So that keeps them nice and cool and also stops people poking their fingers in and keeps them safe in transit. There's a bit more decoration at the top here by the head, which gives it a bit more of a sort of shoulder appearance from the front. So the head is of course programmed as a DMX device and I'm just using Freestyler again here, which I used before to do puppeteering sequences. And we can do various things such as of course turn the head. And then we've got the other two servos are on separate channels there. So the eyes are actually also one single channel and depending if I turn that value up, so in increments of five, they should open up and do various things. And I haven't programmed anything else yet, but I will program it to do some more things. I want to do a Larson scanner like Knight Rider that flashes across the uh, front of the vision there, which is why we've mainly got that big LED matrix. The mouth is a separate channel, which goes all the way up and that means I can hopefully sync it light to sound. So as there's sound or the robot speaks, we can have that kind of VU meter looking thing and that's why it's on its own channel. So of course we can use a step sequencer to play a bunch of stuff back that I've already programmed, just some rudimentary motions and we should see um, all of the lights and all of the motions there. Obviously that servo mixing to tip the head either side works pretty well as well when it's programmed. So I don't have a way of actually puppeteering the robots and moving the head yet, that's something that needs to come up in the future, but for now of course they're all controlled by DMX, so I can program up a sequence and play it back. I'm still using Freestyler for now, there's some other opportunities that I need to look at there for some software, including Venue Magic that I mentioned in the past and a couple of other open source ones. So that was pretty rudimentary, it's actually pretty hard to program all the steps in step sequencer just by doing add step and setting the new positions and expecting it to be really fluid. Some of it looked okay, some of it was a bit quick and some of it was a bit slow and you just have to set that time and the fade which is essentially the interpolation between steps. So we'll be looking at some better software with proper timeline, the ability to sync to music and to video and things like that where I can draw on the timeline and edit it more easily. I'd also really like some software that will allow me to record and play back the puppet tearing rigs that I made. Check out the last video for more on that. 
so then we can really make much more fluid poses and record and edit those motions. Next time I'm going to, I think I'm going to build hands for them so that we can actually um, attach buttons to these and we can have a button to make the hand grip so people can do challenges and we can do telepresence and collaborations but also we need a method of using the head with the puppeteering rig. So I quite like to put a three axis joystick on top with a pan tilt zoom that will control the three axis of the head but I think also there'll be a second button on each arm that makes the head follow that arm and if you press both it follows the average of both of them or something like that so you can in fact puppeteer the head with the puppeteering rigs with only two hands so that's all for this video again don't forget to check out my patreon and also have a youtube channel membership if you don't like patreon so check out those links in the description below all right that's all for now